I feel a bit naked at the moment. I haven't got my cup of tea with me. Um, good day and welcome to the final instalment on the Starly Rebuild. Great gig. Had a lot of fun with that. Uh, I will start this with a bit of a disclaimer. There's a um, instance of bad language in this because it was in reference to something somebody said to me. And there's an off-colour joke. So if you're likely to be offended by those things, just don't watch the video. Um, right. The other thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is I wasn't able to do, uh, you know, a drive through Warrandyte, drive-bys and, you know, the cars travelling along and Rosie's sitting there filming and all this. I wasn't able to do any of that sort of thing because we're now in lockdown again. And this was a bit of a problem. Now, when you get a permit, an unregistered vehicle permit, the purpose of it is it's a, just a thing you print out on your computer through VicRoads and it lets you drive the car around organising um, repairs and so forth to get the car ready for registration. And I had a 10-day one. And so I went up and got uh, front end alignment. That was all good. Went up and got the road with you. That was all good. But the permit was due to expire after the Friday appointment with Vic Roads. And they shut the state down, I think, on Wednesday or something. And I was like, my goodness me, what am I going to do? Because it means I'd have to go and get another permit, another road with me, all this sort of stuff. But I called Vic Roads and they said, no, 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 it's all good. Um, you've made the appointment. It's a proper government authorised thing and da, da 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 And so I went in there and they registered the car and it's fine. So that was a relief. And so the only footage on the road is driving the thing back from the roadworthy and driving it back from Vic Roads. And on the way, I had to pick up my daughter from her work. And so she does the time while she was there filming while I was driving the thing. And that's the only driving we've been able to do when I've let her leave the house, which is cool. That's fine. I'm not, you know, I'm not interested in breaking laws for the sake of a video. So it's all done. Very pleased with it. Disappointed with the paint, but mm, it doesn't matter. You know what? When the car's wet or in semi-light, you can't see it. <laughs> it's only in the full sun. So as far as what we're going to do next, there's motorcycles. There's um, basically the motorcycles. We've got four bikes here which you can't ride, and I want to get into those, but that's quite expensive as well as doing any of the other stuff I've got to do here because I've got a large tax bill and also Suzanne's car on the excess for $700 because some clown decided to break the window and damage the car and hmm, all that sort of stuff. So that's at the insurance at the moment getting fixed. So I wouldn't mind doing another Starly. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I'd do a different colour obviously, but I've got all the stuff here to do another one. I mean, I've got three gearboxes, I've got a spare engine, I've got power mirrors and power steering air conditioning and I've got everything to make another one. The only thing I haven't got is a decent seat trim, but that's pretty easy to get. Um, so maybe in the future sometime, if I rocked up with another car here, I would be a single person, single man, because Suzanne wouldn't put up with that. And I've stretched my luck as far as it's going to go with that sort of thing. So with that being said, um, not the presentation I really wanted to give for the final video. Um, but it's all I can do in these circumstances, so I hope you enjoy. Well, apparently there is a red starly lurking down here somewhere. I think I can see it. Um, wiper blade stuff and just mirror trims and just crap that I've lost and I can't even be bothered going around under the house to find them. It's easier coming here and more fun. That looks like one. They had no Starleys in stock. They got rid of the other two. I took the power steering off one, but I think that's one there. That looks like one, a red one. Should be a three door. Um, oh, it's a 98. It's a faded one too. Oh, let's have a look at this. What gifts is it gonna bring? Obviously not an airbag. I stopped into the wreckers. We're having, I'm just doing final stuff on the Starley now. The wipers had these sorts of clips and they just slide out. The lock is obviously broken. This is the more conventional type and I didn't realise there was two different types on them. Um, they don't fit the other arms unless you draw file them. <laughs> so once you file them, they'll go in. They'll clip in. Um, didn't have any idea that they were different types. So can we focus on that? So then we can pop the blades in and make the car look semi-road worthy anyway. But yeah, just a couple of last minute bits and pieces. The other thing I got while I was there, oh, and they didn't have the right blades for me. So I've used old ones and just had to try and get some clips. Uh, this A-pillar trim here for the left hand side, that top thing broke. 
How's it got that? And tripped over this. Another 98 steering wheel. This one has the horn button, but no airbag in it. Somebody has taken the inflator out. I don't know. I would have thought they were all Takatas. But the horn pad was sitting on the floor. No inflator to be found. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to grab that because they're just getting rarer and rarer and so many of these were destroyed. I've noticed people starting to use them. Well, there's a guy with a 300 kilometer an hour Supra and he's got one in his. So obviously they fit other cars. So I've got three of those now. Two with horn rings or horn things so if we do decide to build another one guess what it's getting well apparently it's going to rain today it's not too bad at the moment so i had to get the white blades on um i didn't get the one in the back because we out of time and when i put the front ones on they were crashing into the bonnet because i had the arm on the wiper motor the wrong way unregistered vehicle permit so i'm going to put this on and We'll take it for front end alignment. I might just pull the bonnet up, make sure I haven't left any tools there, and we should be good. All right. First time I've driven this on the road since I've done it. I haven't adjusted the clutch yet. Hopefully, the camera sitting on a dodgy mount doesn't mess up. My glasses, hang on. Got my wallet and everything. See, the clutch is right on the floor, I don't like that. But that's just a bleeding issue. Okay, here we go. Oh, and I've got a rattle at the door. I'm going to have to fix that too, because that's going to annoy me. Um, wipers are working. Sweet. I can't see. No one's coming. Alright. You can see the sky's getting threatening. I think you can see. Um, that track's true, it drives beautifully. I've got the front end alignment fairly accurate too, but look at that. So we'll take him in and get a front end alignment and just to verify what I've done. I didn't take any of the um, tie ends off or anything. So it should be all good. Good old ring with it again. That's Costco. He's called that Target Square. It's now Bunning Square. Um, they don't have key cutting for cars, so I might just go to Eastland. There used to be a ring of market, and I remember when I was a kid up here, there'd be draft horses, which we used for the milk delivery. You used to hear them in the morning. I was scared of them. I was about six, I suppose. Anyway, um. Then they pulled it down and built the new Ringwood Market here and it never got populated. It was a bit of a disaster. Here's another view. Um, the old Ringwood Market that was at this site here used to have dual food bun. The first time I saw black and white labelled groceries. But they had a pretty good deli. Hmm. Oh, time to cross. This is all changed up here. It used to continue through there. It was a road, and there'd be a bottle shop on the left-hand side of the old Eastland. It's all completely different now. It's so built up. I'm not like the old Eastland where it was all brown. It's pretty quiet this morning, but I am here early. I don't think a lot of the shops are open yet. Um, yeah. So I'll get this key cut, and we'll go back and see if the car's ready. Look at something in the food court, but I think they're all closed. I don't think Ringwood's like it used to be. There's rubbish on the ground in places. They've got this high density housing and flats and things going up. I think it spoils it. It looks good now, but in the future, it might be, I don't know, a bit of a slum in the future, I suppose. I don't know about these loaded dingers on the ground. That's what I meant with a colour that stands out. I think it's safer. We haven't got airbags, but that is definitely a safe colour. I'll go pay and we'll take it home. 
Okay, Rose. Jump in the new Starly. <laughs> right, so we've uh, got the rain with you. And it's here. Wow, look at that. So we've got to hang out till Friday. I'm a little bit nervous because if the state shuts down, I've got an appointment on Friday with Vic Rose. And I'm just hoping the state doesn't close down before then. But this is the new improved Starly. Pretty much the same as it was, except green. And we've just got to go and put some petrol in. We've got a rattle in the back, in the tailgate, which the other one had too. That's not too bad, but periodically there's a rattle and it'll be that wire guide, the wire sort of actuator lever from the door handle down to the lock. I think it's rattling, so I'll have to put a little bit of foam around it like they had factory. So, Rosie Critique. Let's go stalk the old house. Go on. Yeah, sure. Um, I am very impressed. Are you happy with it? Yes. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful? It's beautiful. I'm pleased with it. It feels like the other one. It feels a bit tighter, actually, because it's probably because it's just been worked on. Let's see what they're doing with my old house. We're stalking the old house. We stalk a lot of things. Eric and President Heath might hang on someone's cars there. My kids were babies in this house. Yeah, they've made it bigger. They've extended it. I miss that house in some ways. They don't miss the termites that were in it though. And there was a really eccentric guy lived in this house by himself. He's on heaps of land. But I think he passed away. He used to live in that shambles, kind of like a castle. And then the church they're going to pull down too. That's not very holy of them. I never used that, I don't know. I don't know if Alana would have used it. I don't know what faith. I think it was Uniting Church and she's Catholic. Alright, so um. time to get petrol. Um, so this car is made up of about six different cars and we're pretty happy with how it's going. It seems to be fairly good. I haven't got air conditioning because it needs to be um, evacuated and gassed. So that's, I'll do that in the spring. The bluey's got air conditioning and that's the next one on the agenda to get sorted anyway. But we're on Canterbury Road, waiting to get on Canterbury Road and here's a large truck that would squash the Starling so we've just got to... Drive in front of it now. <laughs> no, it's inside lane, but sometimes they change lanes, you don't know what you're doing, you know. Yeah. I'll go and put premium in it. We always put, I never use regular and let it always use premium in the cars, even the old cars. Um, it's 95 octane, so yeah. that's better than using normal and letter, which I think is 91. Then there's your Optimax or whatever you call it, the ultra premium one's 98, but I don't see the point in spending that much. Anyway, Heathmont Shops, I grew up around here. Um, oh, motorbike. Back in the truck, oh, you've got to start off. And I'm driving the slowest car here, so I'm going to get beaten, but it doesn't matter. I'm not in any great hurry. Now, if the police come around, we're going to get lit up. We got lit up in this car on the way home from Mickleham, wherever it came from, um, because there are no plates, and they'll go over the red unregistered vehicle permit, and they'll do everything they need to do, which is fine. That's what their job is. Um, the, it is improved in a way, because I've got this new gear knob, and that's really good. It's not sticky at all. It's beautiful condition. And the stereo is really good. Oh, and we're off. Oh, look at that. Starling, flat out. We'll do 60. That's all right, that'll do. Okay, it's on. Now right. run over that man. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Running over anything, <laughs> no, unless I found them with you. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Um, <laughs> Now, <laughs> all right, so Rosie and I, I've just filled up with petrol. Well, I put 20 litres in, so we'll see what that does to the gauge. This is a different tank and sender. I didn't change any of that. It's the original one that came with this car. So Harvey will probably chime in and say, ah, you did the wrong thing because it's a 96, 97 tank and sender. Being different to 98 with a 98 cluster. So. <laughs> It's climbing, so that's cool. We know it's doing something. Um, Rosie and I haven't done our ritual. We normally bless things by running around and making stupid noises and annoying the other two kids. And we haven't done it yet. So 
know, it's just an in joke sort of thing we do. And although mum, I don't think we'll be able to travel in this car as far as you can, so it doesn't go to complete waste and I'll get to daily it, so it's all good, hopefully. What's the speed limit? It's 70, is that from here? Oh, 11, it's 70. Alright, here we go, we're doing 70, that's cool. I haven't even cleaned it, I haven't even done any cleaning on it, I just banged it together and wrote with it. I really did rush this, but, you know, we're going down to 40 now, but in essence, it did turn out very well, so I have no complaints. Um, right, so the gauges are all working well. The temperature is where it should be. The um, fuel gauge, that's where it should be. I've put 20 litres in, so it's almost ready. Full speed, of course, it's just cable operators, no big deal. And the tack's working. Everything's working well, so I'm very happy with it. So, yeah, look, that's going to do for now. I will take it to Big Roads on Friday, and I'll turn the camera back on then. Um, we've just been to Big Roads, got the car registered. So, I picked Alana up. Alana's with me. Say hi, Alana. Hi. And, yeah, on the way home. Just going through Box Hill at the moment. Um, everything's good. There's a slight vibration, I've noticed, at, in the steering wheel. But I think it's more an engine vibration than a car. So I'll probably knock the balance or something. I'll have to have a look at that. But otherwise, it's perfect. But no, we're working really well. Sailed through the road with Um I made noises about it and said I was so annoyed about the paint. And the guy said, quote, unquote, um, it's the best fucking one we've seen. So that's good. They're not my words, they're his. So I was quite pleased with that. Um, Keys vibrating. It's probably one of the vibrations. The stereo is brilliant. This month at Bloom's the Chemist, it just full works so well. Testing is half Oops. price. Bloom's the Chemist. So we've been enjoying a bit of music on the way back, turning it up, having a few laughs. Um, so that's it for this car. I, I can't do any more on it. It would be futile because I've basically worn my welcome out with Starly videos. But I'm very happy with it. Um, yeah. It's all good, so we'll just continue driving home and hopefully we don't. I was actually nervous, there was a guy behind me driving erratically and I thought he's going to run on my backside and I was just really nervous. I was ready to jump in the right hand lane to try and avoid him because some of the motorists at the moment are just nuts. The roads are fairly empty at the moment, I guess we've got the, um, the restrictions, the isolation. What do you reckon, Alana? Would you prefer Starly or that Porsche? Tough decision. Tough decision. But I might have to go with the Porsche. It's actually a, a four-door Porsche. Right, well, here it is when we first got it. The paint on the tailgate looks very, very good. But that's about where it stops. If you look at the roof here, it was knackered. All the clear coat had come off. But the base colour underneath was stable. So we didn't take it back to bare metal. Um, just basically got rid of all the faulty clear, primed it and repainted it in green. That pale blue one behind it is the one we took the engine from. Anyone who's seen this series of videos will sort of know all this stuff anyway. The interior was shabby. The seat you can see is all wrecked. The passenger seat was the same. The trim is very dirty. And virtually nothing of this car on the inside that you can see now I retained. Most of that stuff went into the other two cars when they were taken back to Toyota. Um, loads of stuff came from the pale blue one and also the five door one which is the red one out on the street behind the blue one I don't know if you can see it so I retained the panels and the side glass and the rear glass I didn't even retain the windscreen I broke it when I was taking it out but I didn't intend to keep it anyway because I wanted to change the colour um, the car drove quite well had quite a high mileage on it um, had a horrendous noise from the air conditioning compressor uh, so I didn't retain that either um, so none of the drive line was kept, the struts weren't kept, you know, none of the suspension, even the tail lights I didn't reuse. Um, very, very little of it. The carpet wasn't reused either, none of the interior. It was um, just basically the shell and the glass, and I'm trying to think what else. Not much, really. So I pulled a few trims off to do a bit of explorative work to just check out the wiring. The wiring in these cars is different from the later ones, so 96, 97. Uh, is different from 98.99 of course the 98.99 cars had 
uh, airbags and seatbelt pretension as a standard. These had seatbelt pretensions too, but they weren't electrically connected unless they're mechanically operated. I'm not very sure. So I ended up using the wiring loom out of this car, although I didn't really intend to, but I did have to drill holes in the A-pillar and the doors to pass the wiring through. I used factory wiring for the mirrors and the central locking. And of course the engine, every mechanic likes an engine bay. Um, engine bay was shabby, it was dirty. It's running here, it was squealing through that air conditioning clutch bracket, uh, clutch bearing I should say. But you know what, I did a compression test and they were all evens. It was a shame to put this engine into another car, but the engine that's in the car now is one that I bought uh, brand new in 1998, so I know it's service history, I've done every service on it from new, and that's why I wanted to retain it. But there was actually nothing wrong with this engine. It didn't blow smoke, it didn't do anything it shouldn't have, it didn't make any funny noises. It was a little bit noisier in the overhead gear to what this one is, because it's done a lot higher mileage, but in all, it was still pretty good. I just thought it was probably better to keep the one that I had. What's notable about this vehicle is its compliance, January 1998, which means it should be um, an airbag car, but it was built in December 97, and I know on the 20th of December 97 is when the model year for 1998 began. So all the cars from there on came with the different seat trim, the different mountings for the lower control arms, um, the different steering columns and steering wheels and brake pedal boxes, and they had the airbag wiring and all that sort of stuff. So this car was obviously built in the first three weeks of 97, which is why it's the oldest spec. So Rosie and I mulling over the colour. It was sort of down to a couple of colours. There was a pearly, a watermelon colour um, like a metallic pinky colour, which I was considering. Rosie was quite partial to that, but the vehicle was really... Rosie and I get, had a lot of pleasure with the other Starley. We spent a lot of time together doing shopping and that sort of stuff, and I'd run to parties and all that sort of stuff in it. But um, the vehicle was really built for my mother because of her limited uh, mobility, and I asked her, I said, what colour, Mum? If you could buy one, what colour would it be? And she said, oh, I'd like an aqua one. So that's the reason um, that we went with the... Uh, turquoise Tropicana. It's colour number 756. It's a beaut colour. But uh, it was ultimately mum's choice because that's who I built the car for. Parts for these cars are still quite affordable um, unless it's a glanzer part like a front uh, spoiler or whatever. And you can see the standard wheel covers there. Even those things are starting to become expensive for some reason. That's the reason I, I need to keep the dollars cheap on this car and that's the reason I've gone with the, just the cheap, super cheap auto ones. Um, that way if we gravel rash it doesn't matter. The vehicle was missing one hubcap and one was badly gravel rushed. Um, so I've got two good ones, you know what I mean? If another two good ones drop into my lap, I'll use them. But um, people are starting to look for this sort of stuff now, which is quite surprising. But the vehicles were, were, were never an expensive car. They were designed to compete with Hyundai with their XL and Daewoo Lanosis and stuff like that. Toyota wanted to get a bit of the action with the 13990 drive away no more to pay cars because these are originally around 16,000 I think or 15 and a half and they didn't sell and of course once Toyota dropped the price to 13,990 drive away no more to pay which was their slogan and then they started fitting air conditioning at no extra charge and that's when these things started to become uh, quite sought after at the time. So there's a lot of rebuilding videos on the car once where we pulled it apart and it's uh, rebuilding a grocery getter um, and then of course we had the COVID thing where we had to go into lockdown and as kids were doing online learning and then I renamed the videos um, Let's Build a Car, part one through to part, I think this is part eight. And I used it for the systems kids. I teach systems at secondary level for year, years nine and ten. And I used it for those kids. And they could work out, you know, reduction ratios and leverage. And we could talk about electromechanical systems and mechanical and hydraulic systems and all this sort of stuff. And so it served its purpose quite well in that capacity. But they're the two series of videos you'll find all the rebuilding done on the car. But we'll have a look at the finished article right now. And of course, here's the finished car. Um, a couple of still shots here. It's all registered and used sparingly at the moment because of the um, coronavirus lockdown. An easy car to do. There was a couple of challenging parts putting these, I suppose you call them drip rail mouldings back in. They were urethaned in and they sort of were in a deformed shape when I removed them. They weren't well fitting in the, in the first place. Um, Starlet shop online for the transfers. The Toyota Life and Starlet ones you can see there. Um, he does wonderful work. And of course they finished the car off, I think. 
A lot of people are critical of the life bizo, but I think it's a positive thing. That's why I put the stickers back on. We fitted it with a factory, in inverted commas, CD player. Um, the radio there is the standard article. I used the five doors parcel tray with two speakers and it sounds great. I came across a car at the wreckers in immaculate condition and that's where the gear knob and a lot of the this factory rear floor mats and all that sort of stuff, that steering wheel came from that vehicle as well. And it's just in flawless condition. Um, a lot of cars of parts, sorry, like the power pack you can see with the, the mirrors there and the power steering and everything came from a red car that was pranged. That, that was one I bought new. Uh, the boot mat, that came from that car from the records and it's mint. There's absolutely nothing, no marks on it. And so the car is, yeah, pretty much immaculate. It's got an N14 Pulsar front and that bear on the left hand side. You can see it says Solair. But I'm delighted with the car. It's everything I wanted and it's, it's sort of to the spec I would choose if I was to buy a new one. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Very sad times. This is where mum was living after she moved from Park Orchards. And we've had to move her into full care. So we've cleaned the house out. No, I haven't cleaned it, but we've moved everything out of here. I'm just here to grab some old beds and all this other stuff. Oh. Uh, she liked this place because it had the view of the hills over there. Um, but it's all empty now. It's the second time we've moved it in three years. And it's just such a shame. I feel really sad for it. It's a nice unit. Got a nice kitchen and a second bedroom. She used to sleep in this room. And all that ensuite. Not an ensuite, a bathroom and a laundry. Do you want to have a laundry? Yeah, it's just the laundry. The kitchen was great. And the front bedroom. Until everything's moved out with a, a big ensuite, huge shower, walk in robe. Trouble is with these places, it's 700 grand. Then it's, um, you virtually get nothing back, so I've just got to come and pick up some old beds and. I've left the bloody keys in the Commodore. We're going to get a guy to remove this stuff and he quoted like a thousand bucks. Or a hundred bucks, between a hundred and a thousand. So you don't know what you're going to get with guys like that, so. Bye. I told my sister, no thanks. This is where the XW was living for months. Is going to stay there? Yep. All right, I'm going to start loading this up and we'll go. It's a nice village though. They don't mind charging though. This is the problem with her place. Look at the driveway. She can barely walk. And she used to fall over, apparently, deliberately into these beds. So it was a soft landing, which was really sad. I found that out later. The neighbours used to come and pick her up all the time. Okay, more rubbish. Young out to some stuff. This was Dad's. When he was ill, it was level there. I put those washers in with him. He wanted it on a very slight angle. That thing's been kicking around and slept in for years. She just wanted a couple of single beds in a spare room. I think that's the reason she had it. Oh, happily, the police don't get me. We have the car and the trailer full. Just got this little bit here and we'll pick that up tomorrow in the Commodore. I don't know how to get this down now. That's our, um... That'll do it. All right, XW's prior home. It's time to go. As I said, hopefully the police don't get me. Um, we have to get home with a very dubious looking trailer. It would just would have been nice if Mum could stay here a bit longer. She's only been here since 2017, so moved her three times or twice, sorry, in three years. And she really liked this place. It was the only place she would move after Park Orchard, even that was on a hill. 
but um, Croydon is very hilly. It's essentially in the valley, I think. So, I think I'll get that. Uh, there's an azalea out there. She's been in hospital for eight weeks, and so that's kind of my fault if the plants have died. Is that going to move? Yeah, probably. We're going to have to be very careful. Anyway, time to go home. Well, here we are home again. In the old XD. This car will never leave me. It's nice and warm in here now. I don't want to get out. It's cold out there. Um, it's just too good. I've had it. It's done every major trip we've had has been in this car. When I moved out of home, when my sister moved out of home, it's been for it's been with every trip, with us every trip. And a couple of sad trips, moving mum a couple of times, moving me out of the first house and into this one. This guy did all of it. Oh, I got home though, not from anything. Right. But yeah, I will never ever sell it. I'll sell every other car I've got before I sell this one. Um, Alana has decided to so when I go, who wants it? Alana wants it. And it's an auto, so she can drive it. All right, unload this stuff and we're done. I must admit, I was nervous when Hudnut took it, but he said, he said it's very talky. I don't find it talky, but not terribly fast. But he didn't, he didn't let it go back to first. You've got it with this car. Most of the C4s are like this. Anything over about 40 kilometres an hour, if you stick your foot down, they don't kick back to first unless you manually push them down. Um, so he never let it rev, which is kind of good. <laughs> um, he did take care of it, which is the main thing. It needs a repaint. But, um, yeah, monetary-wise, it's not the most valuable car here, but it certainly is to me. Uh, time to do this, then. What do you reckon? She hasn't. She's just... <laughs>